long wait is over. I'm very happy and proud to be able to present the most track-orientated GT car we ever developed to date, the new GT3 RS. One thing when you first look at the car is very obvious. It's all about aerodynamics. It looks very much like a race car and it has aerodynamic values, downforce values that are double as much as we had from the predecessor. That means at 285 kilometers per hour, there's 860 kilos of downforce on the car. And even at 200 kilometers per hour, we have 410 kilograms. That is a lot and that helps a lot on cornering speeds, especially in high speed corners. And how did we achieve that? Active aerodynamics. A huge rear spoiler, six feet wide, higher up in cleaner air than ever before, and two modules hidden beneath the front lamps that have active diffusers that work in synchronicity with the rear flap that goes up and down to get maximum performance on track. And this car does not only feature a lot of aerodynamic components that we use in the GT3 R race car, we even stole a feature from Formula One which is a drag reduction system that the pilot can activate via a button on the steering wheel to reduce drag and give the car the best performance out of the corners on the longer straights. Everything on the car has a function. If we start with these nostrils here on the front hood, they're there to guide the air that exits from the radiator, which is hot, to the sides of the car, to both sides of the car, and keep the air outward of the center section where the uh, intake system of the car is located. The cooler the air, the more oxygen we have, the more power the car can produce. And we're doing this by these nostrils and these fins here on top of the roof, which have a slightly curved geometry to guide the airflow away from the center section. This radical aerodynamical concept is not only in the middle section of the car, it's on both sides of the car as well. The airstream enters here and there's not a radiator anymore like on the predecessor. There is a module hidden beneath the headlamps that is uh, electronically operated with two diffusers. So we guide the air through these diffusers, guide it on through the control arms and all the suspension parts here, which are shaped aerodynamically. So we have a profile on each control arm here that contributes to the downforce of the car big time. We have another 40 kilos of additional downforce solely by using this aerodynamically shaped control arms. If the air goes on, it gets ventilated through these veins up above, which we know from the uh, predecessor, which work a little bit more efficient even. And we use this section here, which is a little bit drawn to the inside to exhale the air a little bit better out of the wheel wells. And for that, we had to construct a new door that is made of carbon fiber. These veins here guide the air close to the body to prevent swirls that are causing back pressure. We don't want to have that. And then guide the air here through the side of the car into these intakes here, which are not used anymore for intake charge of the car, which are part of the aerodynamical concept to accelerate the air, guiding the air mostly and as flat as possible to the side of the car by using these veins here. And that's not everything. There's a lot of air entering in the front, underneath the front splitter. The whole under construction of the car is full of veins and guiding flappers uh, to get the best aerodynamical results. A lot of speculation was going on, what kind of engine would be in this car? There's 525 horsepower, so that's 15 more than on a GT3. How did we do that? Different camshafts, different setup, and um, the camshaft has higher overlap, creating more ferocity in the revving up dynamics, more power at high RPMs, which is a 9,000 RPM red line, and made it to this fire-breathing engine is a PDK gearbox, quite typical for an RS variant, because it's really quicker on the track. And this gearbox has a shorter final drive, if you compare it to the GT3's unit, to compensate the bigger wheels. 335 section tires, wider track, all ball jointed multi-link rear axle, the newest generation of race dampers in this car. They're a wider track than on the GT3 by 29 millimeters. 
and the whole bespoke new wheel guiding components like the control arms or the wheel knuckles. We have a deeper pivot point here, so that gives us kind of an anti-dive system to the car that enables us to keep the car always at the same pitch, including under very hard braking, though that means that the distribution between the front downforce and the rear downforce on the car always stays the same and the car is very controllable because there's no shift in downforce on the car. This car here has a 410 mm PCCB brake system, which we know from the predecessor and which is superb on the track and on the street. As standard equipment, the car comes with a steel rotor, which is revised and enhanced over the ones we use in the GT3. The steel rotors are thicker to create more longevity on the track. And the rear calipers on this car have a different piston diameter to get even more stopping power from the super wide rear to create the best stopping times and stopping distances I think we ever had on any street car in Porsche. On the quest for maximum brake performance, we have aerodynamical aid here as well, because we can influence this rear wing, which folds up as the stopping distance is a lot shorter. There's another trick we have up the sleeve. We can control compression and rebound of the dampers in the car. The driver can do it himself. It's really very neat. You don't have to go underneath the car and uh, play around with damper settings there. You can do it from the cockpit. We have the satellites here on the, the PSM system. The damper control is not all you can do here. There's another button here that says ESC TC. That's a traction control. By push of that button, you get another screen and you can adjust the traction control to your liking and you can even turn it completely off. Another thing you can control here is the electronic rear differential. You can influence the values for coast and power to your liking. Very good if you have damp conditions or if you have a bumpier road and you can influence the car's behavior upon braking and exiting the curve by a big time here. There will be a Weissach package as well available for the car. Traditionally, the Weissach package shows off more carbon fiber than this non Weissach variant here. That means the front lid is carbon fiber, visible carbon fiber. The roof is visible carbon fiber. And for most markets, we offer a rear roll cage made of carbon fiber as well, which is uh, in itself six kilos lighter than the steel variant. Another goodie here for the Weissach package is you can order the car with magnesium forged wheels as well, which shave off another eight kilos of the car's overall weight, which in its uh, lowest spec is 1450 kilograms, which is quite a low figure for a car like that, for the size of the car and for all the technology involved. So that rounds it off. I think we have the most hardcore GT variant to date standing here behind me. And um, there's so much technology and innovation going on, not only to make the car faster, to make it more fun to drive as well. I love to drive it, especially in the high speeds corners on every given track. It's mind boggling what this car can do. It's so much fun and um, I really love to drive it and I'm absolutely sure you will love it too. Welcome to the world premiere of the new Porsche 911 GT3 RS. My name is Patrick Long. I've had the distinct honor of being part of the family for the last two decades, both on the racetrack and on the street. And every single time I've jumped into a 911 GT3 RS, I've left with a smile on my face and some pretty warm tires. I'm not gonna introduce this car by myself. I have a great guest with me, Andy Proninger, the father of the GT3. Nice to see you. Good to see you, Pat. So as soon as I walk in, there it is, the 996 GT3 RS. Yes. Car that we both started this company's tenor with. An amazing, amazing car. So close to the car that I drove on the racetrack. But then, it got interesting. Yeah, well, the first uh, 
996 RS was a homologation special uh, to uh, homologate parts that we needed in the race cars that you were driving back then. Uh, in this case, it was uh, steering knuckles and some suspension parts, and uh, uh, we built a whole new model around it and um, continued that way with the 997 GT3 RS, which got the wide body of the turbo, which was uh, very distinctively looking and even more aero, even more lightweight trickery. So, so it started the model range RS, uh, if you put it like that. And uh, on the next uh, step was the second generation RS, which got a new engine, 3.8 liters of displacement instead of 3.6, hmm. more power, more aero, wider track front and back, and even more lightweight, like the carbon fiber stuff. So uh, it was a pretty nice evolution. When I first jumped into the 991, RS, I thought to myself, how do they do it? How do they give you a product that you can absolutely punish on the racetrack lap after lap after lap? I recognize so much aero advancement, so much powertrain advancement, and always the aesthetics. You guys always raise the game with the aesthetics, which is a huge part of the emotional connection of these cars. An RS always has to be beautiful, absolutely. Next one was the current one, I would say, till today. The second gen featuring Weissach package, featuring even more lightweight stuff and an engine that was totally revised with 520 horsepower. So it begs the question, which one of these is your favorite? Well, they're all my favorites, but uh, like in every family, the newest member always gets the most love. And uh, my new love has a name. It's 992 GT3 RS, definitely. Doesn't this car look sharp? I think it's more radical, even more radical than a race car. Maybe more radical than a race car you've been driving. It's insane. There's more air detail here than I think I've ever seen in any street car. That's right. I mean, all the exits, all the air vents, all the flaps are there for a reason. There's nothing fake, there's nothing exaggerated. I can't remember any project where we spent more days and nights, countless hours in the wind tunnel. The new GT3S takes road car aerodynamics into a completely new sphere. We've never put so much effort in the development of a GT sports car. With over 1,500 simulations and more than 250 hours in the wind tunnel, we've been able to achieve a new level of performance. We doubled the downforce compared to its predecessor, and in comparison to the GT3, it has even been tripled. This radical change in downforce is due to a new packaging of the front of the car. The three radiator layout is now a mono radiator concept like we use in our uncompromising race car like the GT3R. The first time in our road car history we have a proper high performance front wing that is also fully active and infinitely adjustable. We can rotate the front flap by over 80 degrees and this in just three tenths of a second. By rotating the flap in high downforce position, we achieve the maximum downforce configuration and the load on the front is raised to a maximum. We needed to increase the venting of the wheelhouse. The traditional outlet on top of the fender with the louvers was not enough anymore. A new passage for the air behind the front wheels was designed in order to increase the venting. Even the door design was affected by it. Not only does the new GT3S has turning vanes on the underfloor, they can also be found on the roof of the car. When the hot air exits the front radiator, it would just flow over the top of the roof and the engine air is affected by it. So we have a new hood outlet that pushes the air to the sides and the roof fins continue this work and keep the hot air on the outward direction. The rear wing is of course huge. It is made of a fixed main plane and the movable second element, the flap. Together with the active system in the front, we can reduce the drag by nearly 30%. When you press the DRS button, the DRS drag reduction system, the car turns the flaps into a low downforce position and you achieve the lowest drag of the car. 
The new GT3 RS is really a whole new milestone in road car aerodynamics. The combination of these two new aero systems is front and rear, gives you the perfect aero balance and perfect aero setup for every condition on the racetrack. Unbelievable. In many ways, it suggests this car would be on par with an FIA GT3 race car. Yeah, I think from the downforce values it is. It produces 860 kilos at 285 kilometers per hour, which is a speed that you reach on a Döttinger Strait, for example, on Nürburgring. And uh, just look at the father of all wings. It's towering so high above the car, it's even a little bit higher than the roof line of the car. I'm convinced this has to be the most extreme street legal GT car ever. Absolutely. That was what we were aiming at when we began with the project. And the great thing about it is it offers such a great, rewarding driving experience on the track. It put a smile on my face every time I use it on the track and all the development team as well. And that's a good sign that all the customers will love it too. I can imagine. That brings me to my next curious question about lightweight materials. Lots of those to be found on that car, even though we hide them away with paint. The duck tail is made of carbon fiber, as is the rear wing, as is the roof. We have uh, very, very thin glass that is super lightweight all around the car. And for the first time, this car features carbon fiber doors, which shave off almost five kilos of the weight of the car. And they're integrated into the aerodynamical system of the car, having a different shape than the normal 911 door. And we have conventional door handles. Let's go to the front. Front fenders, carbon fiber, front lid, carbon fiber, and lots of bits on the suspension as well are carbon fiber or super lightweight materials. If you look at the interior, lightweight carpentry, extensive use of microfiber cloth. So we're looking at every, every component of the car. And there's lots of bits on the car. I mean, it's our passion to make these cars as lightweight as possible. And the heart and soul of these cars. Let's talk a little bit about the engine. It's a four liter flat six. 9,000 RPM. We upped the power by 15 horsepower over the GT3, so it has 525 horsepower by using hotter cams with longer duration, so the car makes more power at high RPM operation, has different cylinder heads for more lubrication in super high G situations, which that car really produces. Um, we uh, changed the cooling system a little bit. I get excited when you talk about cam Me tweaking, too. more cooling. Um, GT3 RS and PDK, they go together. Absolutely, RS means range sport, means using the car on the track, um, trying to get the best performance out of the car on the clock as well. So you need a seven speed PDK, it shifts faster, it is quicker, and um, it is easier to operate, yeah, to get the best lap times out of the car, and it's the perfect fit for that kind of car and for that engine. I spent a lot of seasons racing with Jörg Bergmeister and sharing a car with him. It was very apparent he's a bit of a suspension guru. I assume he's quite the same and, and pushes your team pretty hard. He's a perfectionist, absolutely. He's never happy with the suspension and he really drove our suspension engineers to their limit. But it was, was a good thing for the car. <laughs> sitting in the new GT3 RS. The current GT3 already set a really high bar in terms of balance with its double wishbone front axle, but the new GT3 RS is a whole nother level. The car with that much downforce usually is really sensitive uh, to right eye changes, um, especially on the braking, the front usually gains a lot of downforce. But we made a change to the front geometry and put more anti-dive in it and that gives us a more equal aero load under braking as well and keeps the balance consistent. So usually to change the damper settings you need a mechanic, but with our new steering wheel it's just a press of a button and you can adjust compression and rebound front and rear axle while driving. And it's a really big tool for a driver. You can adjust the car perfectly to any racetrack or tire condition. So for instance on a really bumpy track you can go a little softer on the overall damping or if you're on a really smooth track or have plenty of grip from brand new tires for instance, uh, you can go a little stiffer overall. So basically it's a race car driver's dream come true. Also on the steering wheel, one of my favorite features is an adjustable differential. 
For instance, when you're struggling with a little nervous rear on, on corner entry, you can add some more differential on coast. Or if you're struggling with oversteer on, on the corner exit, you just tighten the diff up on power a bit. Uh, so it's a really big tool. Also, when your, your tires degrade a bit, you can adjust the car really nicely with it. Yeah, so far you could either turn the traction control on or off, but now it's really cool. Just like in the race car, we have a fully adjustable traction control with seven positions and you can still switch it off just to your liking. Yeah, all this makes it the best handling 911 road car ever on a racetrack. Uh, it's so much fun, especially in the high-speed corners. The performance of the car is just amazing and I'm sure you're going to have as much fun with it as I do. Pretty incredible. I uh, want some of these features in some of my race cars. Yeah, it's a serious track tool. It's built for the track. No compromise. Uh, we don't even feature a trunk anymore under the front lid. Perfect drivability. Incredible. This car is really built for the track and I hope that all the customers are really using it on the track, but they should train their neck muscles a little bit because you have to tolerate the G-forces the car throws at you. Well, yeah, you talk about the racetrack and it makes me think about the club sport package. I assume that comes with this car. As a matter of fact, the car comes standard with the club sport package, which consists of six-point harness, fire extinguisher, and for most markets, with a rear roll cage. So if I select the Vysok option, what does that entail? Yeah, the Weissach option has been very popular on the last RS model, so it will be an option here again. This is a non-Weissach package car, so if you would have opted for the Weissach package, the front lid would be visible carbon fiber, the roof would be visible carbon fiber, the lower section of the rear wing as well. And we have bits in the interior as well, like the door handles will be carbon fiber, and um, even the suspension, the stabilizer bars front and rear, the transversal strut, alone on the suspension, we shave off five kilos with the Weissach package. And another innovation, the rear roll cage for most markets will be in carbon fiber as well. Unreal. There is such a presence live with this car. I cannot wait to see the public's reaction. Me too, me too. And it'll be on display on your home turf in California on the Monterey Car Show. And um, my plane's leaving this afternoon. So why don't you come with me? I'm heading that way. I'll catch a ride. Let's go.